Thanks so much for joining us today as we discuss the opportunities around Azure and start to look at the ease with which you can deploy servers and extend your data center into a cloud-first environment in Azure. We wanted to take a few minutes to show you how quick and easy it is to build a server, connect to that server, and begin the process of utilizing Azure in your day-to-day -day environment as you extend your data center into the cloud. I'm going to turn things over to our principal architect, Chuck Strain, who's going to take you guys through the creation of a server, the connection of that server, and show you the capabilities that exist within Azure. Chuck? We're going to do a little bit of demonstration of the Azure portal now, um, some of the components that, that comprise the basic Azure um, interface, and then um, show you how to spin up a, a machine actually in the Azure portal, how easy that is to be created and so forth. So on the very top level of the portal, after you log in, this is what you get. You log in here at portal.azure.com, and then you get the basic uh, dashboard. These are definable, and you can modify and determine what you want to have a, actually appearing on your dashboard. So I've got a couple of different things. You can see I've got Azure da Data Center availability, so some high-level you know, statistical information about the Azure data centers and, and what's up and what's not and so forth. And you notice that this scrolls and so you can have a number of different things scrolling out to the left and right. On the left hand side, down the side here, are, are all of the different areas and aspects of Azure that you can use within the portal. You see there's a, a lot. Don't be overwhelmed by it. Basically, this is the um, how do you eat an elephant story one bite at a time, right? So just take little pieces out of this as you familiarize yourself with the portal. Um, you can see you can check on your billing, and you notice I also have that over here on my dashboard, things like that. You can go, and this is what um, typically is called a blade in the Azure interface. And so whenever you click on one of these items, you notice the menu collapse, and then the blade pops out to show you the information that you're looking for. And then down the side, you have another set of options in terms of your like billing address and so forth in this case. And of course, each of these blades reveal different components. There's a couple of things to notice too where it says classic. Microsoft evolved the portal interface from an older configuration to this one. And so some of the items and elements in the portal that were accessed initially or earlier are called classic. And then of course, we're in the, the new the modern portal, the resource management portal. One of the big add-ons or um, additions to this particular portal is the concept of resource groups. And this is sort of the base of everything that you're going to do in an Azure tenant in terms of collecting your resources in that tenant and managing those resources. So you can see there's quite a few resources in this tenant. They all show up under resource groups. And then you can group things such as servers, um, even down to the network card and so forth in terms of those resource groups. So again, I'm going to close this blade. And what we're going to do now is go into what you actually can do to provision uh, items and options in the tenant. And anything that you want can be provisioned by simply clicking on New up here. And then what we'll get is a whole list of all the things that we can provision now. And uh, we'll come back to compute in a minute because that's actually where we're going to turn on and, and actually create a file server in the Azure tenant. Um, you can create new networking, virtual networking, and so forth, storage, web, uh, web services, databases, and so forth. You see there's a whole range of things that you can create. And then it also shows you what you just recently created as sort of a quick um, go-to button down there at the, at the bottom, sort of like a quick dial button. Let's, let's just real quickly look at one or two of these. Um, let's see, enterprise integration, which is kind of a neat one. You can do, This is actually applications that you can pick from a, a, a huge array of applications that are available right in the Azure tenant to add into your Azure tenant to do particular things that you're looking for. So there's integration account, there's a service bus, you can manage APIs and so forth. It, it really goes on and on. And you can see I can go to see, see everything and then you get a full listing of all of the, the different options. And of course, these are Internet of Things, add-ons, database add-ons, and so forth. So the part of the, uh, the problem with Azure is just familiarizing yourself and not being overwhelmed, because there's just so much information and so many things you can do in that portal and in that tenant. Once you get a handle on it, though, it's really pretty exciting. So I'm going to go back, again, closing the blades by using this and then getting back to the initial blade. And then what I will do is go ahead and stop that again, and then we'll get back to our initial array here that we had. So real quickly, I'm going to go right into compute. 
and I'm going to show you that within the compute selection, these are all different versions of operating systems that you can select from within the Azure tenant to create a compute instance. And of course, we call the machines instances within the, the framework of the Azure tenant. And you see, again, I go to select all, and there's just a, a, a ton of things you can go for. So these are all the options that you have. This is, this is typically what you'll use, a Windows server, but you have all of these different options as well. You can use Ubuntu, Red Hat, so lots of Linux platforms that you can run as well in the Azure system. You can spin up a Dynamics instance within your Azure tenant. Uh, Veeam Cloud Connect, they just go on and on and on. So real quickly, I'll just go ahead and start off and show how easy it is to actually create a server in Azure. Now we've got a number of choices yet again, so I'm just going to go with the base server right here. You see we have enough with HPC packs or different configurations that are specific to certain configurations offered, but right here is the one I'm going to go for, just the basic Windows Server 2012 data center. And, and that's going to ask me a couple of questions about it. First thing it's going to do is actually ask what kind of model we're going to use for it. I am going to use the resource manager model, which means, and you'll see in a minute when this comes up, it's going to provision all of the resources for that machine under a, a container or a resource manager that allows me to easily manage and even replicate that machine 2012. I'll just name the machine. You can indicate which type of disk storage you want, whether that's SSD or standard hard drive storage. I'm going to make it SSD just to be fun. You put any username you want. I recommend not using administrator since everybody knows what that is and then a password. Now this is just a direct local administrator that you're going to put on the machine. Here's the subscription that you assign this to. Um, you may have multiple subscriptions in a single tenant, so you have to be sure that you pick the correct one. And then what's resource group, and I'm going to actually have it create a resource group that's the same name as the machine that I'm creating. If you have existing resource groups, you can add machines just into, oh, I'm going to put in a more complex password. Microsoft has actually added a lot more complexity to the passwords required. And so now we get to pick the actual type of machine that we want to start up. Now these are recommended, and you see that when you start an Azure machine up, you have some options about how many drives you want on it, what the maximum IOPS you have, what, the, what kind of RAM, do you want it load balanced or not, and you want premium disk support on it. So obviously there's some detail that needs to be looked at in terms of what premium disk support means and so forth. But let's say just for the sake of what I'm doing here, I want to make a, a medium, and just so you'll know, there's lots and lots of different options here. So if I show all, you can see that there's very many different types of configurations of machines that you can spin up. And remember, these are just the Windows Server but uh, options, there are others for the like Linux and so forth. And then just this also shows you your estimated monthly charge. Now that's if you ran that machine 24-7 all month, that's what it would cost you. So you can see as you get the price variance is based upon resources. So one core and 3.5 gigabytes of RAM is 104 per month versus eight core and 56 gigabytes of RAM is, is gets pretty expensive. So again, they recommend these. These are your basic standard size machines. I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, select the D2, a DS2 standard, which is uh, two cores and seven gig. Um, now this is my storage account. It automatically created a storage account for me. It automatically created a virtual network. Again, you can assign these if you have existing systems. These are all available to be assigned. This is my default subnet. You can see I have an IP address. So all of the basic stuff, if, if you don't want to just um, go through and let it default on everything, you have the option to do that. Whether or not you want to enable monitoring and guest OS diagnostics. And of course, there's lots of detail behind all of this that obviously we need to dig into to really understand all of the aspects of this. So it's going to pass the final validation and says, here's all the things I want to do with it. The provisioning system says that's good, everything looks good. And so you see I'm now into the initial deployment. So what you're going to get now to go back to your main menu and give you sort of a little mon monitor over here that will follow the deployment and lets you see the actual deployment of the system as it progresses. So it now has disappeared from my screen over here, that status, 
And what I'm going to do now is go look at my virtual machines, and there should be at least a management component to it. It may not be completely deployed. And again, this is the difference between virtual machines, classic. These are machines that were deployed in the old portal, and then virtual machines under this tenant are machines that are actually deployed in this. So you see that this is the only one. I have to get my other ones up to date, apparently. But this is the only one that's actually deployed as a um, new style virtual machine within a resource group. So it's being created right now. Um, and I can actually, one, even though it's still being created, I can open up a management blade for it and get some basic information about it. Now you see, once you have a machine deployed, these are all the things that you can do to access and manage that machine, which are pretty extensive in terms of having the, the ability to really quickly go in and look at things like activity logs, you see it firing up CPU percentage as part of the overview. So here's a pretty detailed log. You can do tags, what the availability set is, which these are availability sets are combining different resources. If you want to have high availability or scalability in your machine so you can build availability sets. Here's the actual disk status. Um, it's not enabled yet. So again, we're still bending everything up, but these are all of the options that you have in terms of looking at that um, machine and it's showing you CPU percentage right now, and of course it's not quite ready to go, so he's still um, spinning up. Here's your public IP address right now, so it'll generate a temporary public IP for you, and your subnet and virtual network that was created, and then of course the name of the resource group, and, the, and it, which in this case matches the name of the machine, and then your subscription that's actually that this machine is running under. And you notice also this is my default data center. When you create the machine in Azure, you can choose which data center that you want to have that machine actually live in. Um, my default is West US. Okay, now you see what I've got here. I, I could I could have been on doing other things, and I get a little pop up that says deployment is finished now. So um, right now this machine should be up and running, and I can connect to it directly via an RDP session using those credentials that I um, set up when I created it. So it's still not running any CPU down here yet. So sometimes if you will close it and go back in, it'll reset the interface and then we can. Let's try it again. Okay, so now the start is grayed out. So that's assuming now that he actually has started. Still not quite ready to be connected to. Anyway, that's basically it for how you create a machine. It's pretty quick and simple to create servers up in Azure. And of course, you can shut them down or delete them. Um, they're virtual machines, so you can just delete it if you want. And of course, you can restart it. That's your basic control function and capability. OK, so I've got the machine up and running now. I've loaded it with Internet Explorer. And I'm going to connect to the machine now through Internet Explorer. And you'll note um, what it does is actually create an RDP file for you. Or I can open directly, and this is kind of interesting now with Internet Explorer, because it should let me open the RDP session right now. It's on my other screen. So there's my connect option. And you see this is, what I have to do is go to another account, because it's, and remember I called the user Chuck, and then hopefully I remembered my password, and I typed that in. And then this is just domain Microsoft account. And then you'll get the next item in the desktop RDP session, you say yes, and here we are with our newly created Windows Server 2012 R2 data center, and there it is. Great, Chuck. Thanks. That's awesome. What a great demo and capabilities that exist within Azure. How easy is it to build a server and connect to that server? What I want to talk to you about now is our capabilities of being able to show you how Azure works. To utilize the Azure Everywhere program and create a workshop around showing you how easy we can deploy Azure in your environment, how we can deploy dev test, how we can deploy data center extension, disaster recovery business continuity, SQL in Azure, SharePoint in Azure, or even Citrix in Azure. Microsoft has a great offering right now around Azure Everywhere where they give us the capability of being able to walk through a workshop with you and work shoulder to shoulder with you, showing you how to deploy any of those technologies into an Azure environment, how to build out an Azure environment, and what all the components of Azure may be as you experience them in a day-to-day -day environment, whether that's Azure Site Recovery, whether that's 
Azure Media Services are just the basic capabilities of build, being able to build out a server and use the infrastructure as a service or platform as a service environment. So I would encourage you to contact your Dynetech sales rep today uh, and reach out to them and ask them about the Azure Everywhere program and how you're, you and your company can participate. Thanks so much for your time. And again, Chuck, great job. Look forward to hearing from you all.